What's up guys? Today I'm going to do a tutorial for installing mods on Mac and I'm also going to talk about Windows. I don't have Windows on this computer at the moment. Um, I had to delete my boot camp because of a hard drive failure. So I can't really do that and I also didn't have any uh, screen recording software on there. But I'll talk about it and hopefully you guys will be able to understand what to do based on how I describe what you should do. So, visually, I can still show how to do the Mac. Uh, right now, I don't have any mods, but I'm going to show how to install Mary Glyph's Too Many Items mod. This is probably one of the... I, I, mean, I don't know if it's the best mod or even the most used mod, but it's certainly one of the basic mods. And basically, what it does is an in-game inventory editor. So, you know how in creative mode, it has that little screen that... Let you you know put stuff into your inventory, and it's infinite and all that good stuff. It's basically the same thing except you can do it in survival. This mod has been out or been around for a while, and Mary, or oh, I miss I mispronounced his name. It's Marglyph. Marglyph. He supports the mod very strongly, and that's why this mod is for 1.9 pre-release, which is great because that's what I have. I would have done you know uh, another mod. But uh, this is the only one that I could find that was 1.9, so it's all good. So there are a couple of things uh, you want to do. Is first you want to find the mod. So let's say you find Marglyph's Too Many Items. So first you want to look for the download link. And the best place to look for mods is definitely on the Minecraft forum. So you want to go to Minecraft forum, mapping and the modding, and then released mods. And in there you will look first. Every thread will have the uh, the version number in the front. And this version number corresponds to which version of Minecraft you should have. And um, so this is 1.9. That means this mod will work with 1.9, but they also, mod, modders usually keep the older versions. And you can see down here, he keeps it for 1.8 also. So people who have an older version aren't left behind. He also has 1.7, 1.6, 1.5, and so on. Um, so you want to find the mod and Minecraft forms best way to do it so within the thread you want to read you want to read everything trust me you want to read this stuff because first of all a lot of it has to do with how to use the mod uh, it'll tell you you know what buttons to use or what keys not buttons what keys to press to do something such as open the inventory how to uh, for this mod how to do unlimited stacks how to add items, how to turn it on and off, how to do colored, or not how to do that, but uh, yeah, save states, stuff like that. It'll tell you how to use the mod, it'll tell you in any information about the mod. Modders are usually pretty good about organizing their uh, threads, especially if the mod has good support. If it's a brand new mod, the modder may not have had, to, had a good chance to uh, organize the thread post. But definitely just read it, instructions, any uh, anything, just read it all. How to install, but you don't need to do that because you're watching this video. So then you want to click on the download link for your respective version. I have 1.9 pre-release, so that means I'll be clicking on 1.9 pre. Crap. Okay, some people use AdFly, and if you're like me and you hate ads then you have an ad blocker so a good thing to do is to have another browser such as google chrome or you know just any alternative to the one that you're using have that open uh... and pray that the ad blocker won't do anything weird yeah. it's one thing i hate about adfly which a lot of the modders use is um, if you have an ad blocker on your browser you basically can't even download it. Okay, so let me find that real quick. I'm, I'm pretty sure AdFly isn't blocked on Chrome when you have an ad blocker. So if it's an AdFly link, you'll just wait five seconds. You might have an ad like right here. But because um, my Chrome has an ad blocker and if I didn't recognize it, it just shows nothing, which is great. 
So it's just a five second wait. Okay, so um, let's see. So now you have a zip file or maybe a raw file, you know, one of those two that have all the contents. And so um, what you are going to want to do is to go find that. You're going to extract it. Open it up, and you're going to see a bunch of class files. Or you may see more folders. Uh, for this one, it's just class files. And these class files will go into the minecraft.jar file that I will show how to get to. Um, the best way to do this is to go to the library. And Snow Leopard. Uh, let me figure out. Oh, Snow Leopard. In Snow Leopard, on your, uh, your, I guess, your home folder, yeah, your home folder, your libraries folder used to be inside here, but Apple has hidden it for some stupid reason in Lion. So, in Lion, what you're going to want to do is go to Go, up here at the top, go to Folder, and then type this in, tilde uh, forward slash library and you'll click go. If you're in Snow Leopard, the library folder should be right here in your home folder. So you can just click on that. There are two different library folders. You don't want to go to the one in, uh, uh, let's see, I think it's here, yeah, on your Macintosh hard drive. That's a different one. You want to go to the library that's within, that's hidden within the home folder. And uh, another thing is, once you get here, if you want to have a quick way to access this for you know modding a little bit more and you know adding more mods, you can take the uh, icon up here at the top and put it here on the sidebar. I've already done it, so I don't need to do it again. Next, you want to go to Application Support. Then you want to find Minecraft. then you want to find bin and then you should see minecraft.jar so now you want to open up the download folder that you got from the zip from side by side and so you're probably thinking what do I do now well there are a few ways to do this the easiest way on the Mac that I know is these two scripts. So what you're going to do is I will put the script in the description and you're going to want to use them separately. There will be two different scripts. You use the first one before to open the minecraft.jar. Then you put the mods in, the mod class files, put those into the minecraft.jar and what, what happens is it creates a new folder and then you will want to use another script to close it and that will automatically delete the meta inf fo uh, folder that everyone talks about. So I'm, I've already got it over here. So you'll copy that script. You'll open up terminal that I have right here. Paste it. And then it'll put all the lines in except the last one. You need to press enter again. And so I don't need this screen anymore, but I do want to do one thing first. I want to make a duplicate of my Minecraft.jar. And the reason I want to do that is because in case the mod somehow doesn't work, I always want to have a backup to go to. And you should do this between every single mod, because if one mod doesn't work, you'll know which one it is if it doesn't work the next time. So you want to go back to your home folder and you'll have a folder called MCTMP Minecraft Temporary. Click on that and you have a bunch of class files. Now what's going to happen when you uh, copy a mod over into the Minecraft Temporary folder what may or may not happen is you may have over you may have folders that what's the word? override that you know they have the same name and what you want to do 
is you want to use the ones from the mod and paste them over everything in Minecraft temporary. And so that may end up with having some of these replaced with some of these from the mod. And that's perfectly fine. The only thing you do want to watch out for is make sure two mods don't have the same folder over or same file overlapping. Then you want to check and see if there's some incompat incompatibilities or if there's a uh, a uh, compromise file that either mod has on their uh, thread post. But for this, we should be fine. So we just copy all of them and put them in here. So look, I have one f one file called ey.class and is asking me if I want to keep both, stop, or replace. I want to replace it. Definitely replace it. So now I have all the 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 mod files inside Minecraft temporary. Um, let me go through what other things may happen. There are let's see. Let's sort it by kind. So there's some folders. There are also folders in this Minecraft temporary folder and sometimes the files will go in there but you need to make sure you read the instructions for the mod to know where each file goes sometimes they will go into the folders that are inside Minecraft temporary sometimes it will just go straight into Minecraft temporary sometimes they will create new folders sometimes they'll create new images it really depends always read the .txt file if there is one with the mod usually they include that with the uh, mod zip file so make sure you read that if you don't read it on the thread page and then so now you have your mod in so now you want to copy the second script in the description paste that into terminal and then press enter at the end and then you're, you'll see that minecraft temporary has disappeared that's because it is now closed. So that means Minecraft should work with the too many items mod. So we'll check that out real quick. And then open up the inventory. And here we go. And so now we have all these infinite items over here. We can copy them over into my inventory, and the mod works fine. So what do you do if you want to uninstall the mod? That's very, very simple, especially if you made the backup. If you made the backup, just copy that backup back into the uh, bin folder that was in application support, which was, let's see, go to library, application support, Where's Minecraft? Minecraft. Minecraft bin here. So I got my copy. What I can do is when I quit the game, make sure you quit the game first. So you quit it. Delete this. Delete the modded jar. And then rename the original jar to its original name, Minecraft.jar. And so now your Minecraft is unmodded, or at least back to the original state that it was when you backed it up. So that was easy. I think it's easier on the Mac, but I will do, I will talk about the Windows way to do it. And so I have a little list. So you want to do the same thing, back up the jar, but this is where it changes, right after that. What you want to do is the jar that you're going to mod, you want to open it up in WinRAR. WinRAR is a application that works with RAR files. Um, if you've ever worked with a RAR file, you should have WinRAR, even if it's just the trial version, because everyone knows that it goes on for forever. It doesn't ever expire or anything. You want to open up the jar in WinRAR. Then you want to take those same class files that I showed you in this over here that was in the unzipped folder copy those into the uh, 
the window for WinRAR that will inject the mod files into the uh, Minecraft.jar. Then you want to delete meta imp folder. I cannot say that often enough. Delete meta imp folder. Delete it, delete it, delete it, delete it. Do not let it stay there. Kick it out. Exile it. Do whatever you can. Just delete it. No one likes it. I don't know why it's there, but it's not supposed to be there after you finish modding. So delete that. And then you should be good. Just close out WinRAR. And then after that, you will start up Minecraft. Check to see if the mod works. If it doesn't, if it doesn't work, or if you want to uninstall the mod, just copy the backup back to where the Minecraft.jar was. I also forgot to mention how to find it. So you go to start and then run and then percent app data percent so the percent sign app data percent and uh, then you go to roaming and then you should be able to find minecraft somehow from there then you go to the bin folder just like on uh, the Mac and then you do it's the same thing except with WinRAR so that's it guys if you guys have any questions I will be happy to answer them if they're about windows I will try to answer them um, if you want to see a visual representation of how to do it on Windows, then I strongly, strongly, strongly suggest watching a video about that. If you're on the Mac, though, just re-watch this or ask me a question. I'd be happy to answer, and I'll see you guys in the next video.